Welcome to Poland on a Plate, featuring today's flavors of Polish cuisine. In this episode, Jimmy Papadopoulos of Chicago's Bohemian House will feature his acclaimed beef pierogi, and I'll share some exciting new recipes, including Hungarian goulash with Polish dumplings and miseria, a Polish cucumber salad. And later, I will be making a hearty potato and Krakus Polish ham soup. Poland on a Plate is brought to you by Krakus. Krakus, the true imported Polish ham. Today I'm joined by Chef Jimmy Papadopoulos, Executive Chef of Bohemian House in Chicago. Welcome Chef Jimmy, thank you so much for joining it's me today. It's a pleasure today. to be here, thank you. I hear we're cooking one of your specialties today. Yes, this is our signature beef cheek pierogi. So um, a lot of times, you know, pierogies are filled with potatoes and sour cream. We do ours with braised beef cheek. Why I love using cheek is because the, the texture of it. It has such a beautiful marbling, awesome collagen in it. When you braise it down, it adds for a really nice, unctuous, delicious, beefy kind of pierogi filling. We're gonna start the pan off nice and hot with a little bit of uh, canola oil in a nice hot pan. The reason why the pan's so hot is we really wanna get a good sear to add our sauce to make sure that our sauce gets really good flavor. So, first thing in, beef goes in. Mm, cool. Now the next thing we're gonna add to the pan as that sears, Basha, is onions, carrots, and celery. Uh, if you can go ahead and grab some for me, we'll just sure. gently throw some in there. Start just watch the, the oil. Thank you so much. I'll take the celery. Now, you notice how I left everything nice and big, right? Yeah. That being, the beef cheek has to cook for about a good four hours. Four and a half, probably even five hours, actually. So I wanted the, the mirepoix, the onions and the carrots and the celery, large enough so they wouldn't break down. We're gonna throw a couple of cloves of garlic in there, too. While this is stirring off, it's gonna take about a good four or five minutes to get the good color that we want. Okay. Um, we're gonna start rolling out our pierogi dough. This is a very classic recipe uh, my old sous chef actually gave to me. Uh, her grandmother was Polish and this is her recipe. So it was a really guarded, close family recipe. Um, and it's with sour cream, a little bit of eggs and flour. I'm not really that good at rolling. I'm sure you could probably do a better job than I <laughs> All right, all right, I'll do the rolling. Pass the tough jobs on to you. Yeah, so. I grew up in a family that cooked like that. Whatever my dad didn't want to do, that's when mom got called into the kitchen. So mom was peeling <laughs> onions and garlic and all this stuff. That, yeah. Yeah. I do that a lot in the kitchen, and they're called cut cooks. I just I peel this, do that, and it's. See, awful. that's that would have made us feel a lot better as kids. We called <laughs> sous chefs instead of like, hey you. Having a title, right? <laughs> Having a title as a kid. Most people associate pierogi with Polish cuisine. Right. But your yeah. restaurant is actually Bohemian style. Correct. So yeah. tell me a little bit more about how pierogi falls into that. So for me, when I was crafting the menu, I didn't want to be pigeonholed into being just Czech or just Bohemian food. So uh -huh. ultimately, designing the menu, when you look at the cuisines of, of Central and Eastern Europe, they tend to you tend to see a lot of the same dishes just kind of almost used from culture to culture, right? Mm -hmm. From from country to country. Um, so in doing that, it was kind of a, a very fun project to really kind of craft the menu and, and, and more so curate it as like a, a European inspired menu versus just being Bohemian. So we have pierogi, we have spetzel, we have goulash, we have all these different dishes that you'll notice all throughout Eastern and Central Europe. Uh, all represented on our menu in a fun, modern way. Your chefs must have awesome arm muscles. We have, a lady <laughs> named, we have a lady named Rosa. She spends 40 hours a week just making pierogies for us. So she's just downstairs rolling dough, filling pierogi. It's awesome. Absolutely. I think we're there. Nice. I'm going to go ahead and deglaze the pan right now. Okay. Uh, this is a bit of red wine. I love red wine. Uh, we use port wine because it adds a really nice sweetness to the sauce. So. Cool. So the, the wine's kind of reducing down a little bit. Um, we can go ahead and punch our pierogies out. Okay. Awesome. Now this wine is looking like it's pretty much reduced by about half. So at this point, what I'll do is I have a little bit of veal stock that we pre-made ahead of time. Mm -hmm. You could use chicken or beef or whatever you have at home. Um, and I just want to put enough in just to kind of come up the sides of the beef. I don't right. want it to be too much. So we're not completely covering the beef, just right. if you, halfway up Exactly. If you cover it too much, it'll just kind of boil and you'll lose a lot of that flavor from the beef cheek itself. So I want to just 
just, just, just enough to cover the side. We'll put a lid on this. We'll pop it into a 250 degree oven and let it braise for about a good four and a half hours. So how's my speed on cutting these? Am I approaching Rosa or I, probably not at all? I think all? Rosa would have you beat by about four times, but <laughs> <laughs> four times over, but I think you're, you're, you can catch up. I mean, it's, your, it's your first time doing it. This one's here, a little so. oddly shaped, but we're just gonna leave it. Awesome. great. <laughs> After it's been braised for about a good four and a half hours, what we'll do is we'll pull the meat out and we'll pick all of it apart. What I have here in this pot is actually the finished braised meat itself. So what I have is some sauteed onions with the picked beef cheek meat, and this is the, the base for our pierogi. This is the filling, so. Great, so this is here. after it's come out of the oven. Right, it's after it's spent all that, spent all, that all that time building all the love and, and, and everything that it needs. So and we've I'm lost do. all the vegetables at this point. <laughs> yeah, you're right. All the, all the veg is gone. So we're going to put a nice little dollop in the middle of each pierogi. And what you can do is actually just dip your finger in that, uh, that water mm -hmm. and just run the edge, of the, the edge of the pierogi around the meat. You're lucky that you have very authentic dough because you're testing the elasticity of it with these portions. <laughs> <laughs> right. This is the, uh, actually, this, um, the fun part is, is actually stuffing them. So for me, I learned this technique actually from Rosa. What, what she does is she likes, she picks up the dough kind of like this mm -hmm. and she almost makes a little cradle like this, like so you can see the bottom's empty. And she'll just kind of push around the edges and then pinch up. Beautiful. So she kind of almost like pushes the dough and I'm still not as good as her at it, but nonetheless. If it was up to us to row, run it, Boho, we would uh, yeah, be very slow in the we, pierogi. We'd probably have about <laughs> three orders a day and then everybody would be uh, right, out of luck. try this method. Perfect. I think I got lucky. I think, I think mine had less filling. <laughs> you made that look easy. <laughs> Beautiful. Water's at a nice boil. Got my nice little strainer here. We're just going to drop them in one at a time. All right. And we're just boiling them until they float because the, the, the filling's already cooked and warm. The dough just needs to really cook, so. What's your chef's trick to keep from getting splashed as you're dropping them into the pot of boiling water? <laughs> um, don't be aggressive. Treat the water very respectfully because it's extremely hot. So like you did, <laughs> you kind of just put, you just put it in, you just gently let it go. That's probably the best way. Yeah. So you're not over here just, you know, throwing them at the water, just getting, yeah, that would be bad. <laughs> so, so now these guys are nice and floating. They're, you know, they're floating up at the top of the water and everything. Mm -hmm. um, the, Two things that we can do, you can either take them out, drain them, and then saute them in butter for a little crispy texture, which, which is how we do that at the restaurant. Um, another way that we do them too is we take the actual braising liquid from the beef cheeks, reduce it down with a little bit of garlic and some more fresh port wine, okay. just to kind of fortify the sauce. And then I'm just gonna pop the pierogi right into that broth just to finish their cooking almost, and so they kind of become one, the dough becomes one with that beautiful braising liquid. And this is where it kind of, we take a little spin on the classic. Okay, so now that the pierogies have really kind of soaked up into that jus, um, what we want to do is, is bring them to the plate. Okay, I'll grab the plate. Fantastic. So what I love to do is just literally kind of just, just arrange them randomly. One of these nice, beautiful little plates we have. Yeah, and let's talk about this plate. It reminds me of being home, like in my grandma's kitchen or right. something like that. Totally, yeah. That's. Um, I, I feel like when you go out to restaurants, it's very sensory driven, right? You look mm -hmm. at the ambiance, the food, it all has to come together to really make make something special. So when we when I started picking out plateware for Bohemian House, I really wanted to make sure that we had these touches that kind of made you feel real comforted and homey and it had that really nice eclectic kind of a vibe to it. So to finish the dish, we're literally just gonna scatter a couple of roasted carrots around it. I like that you are using like the heirloom ones, got a little bit of that right. yellow in there too. Yeah, we shop at a Green City Market. Um, two times a week. And what we'll do is we'll pick up some amazing local produce. And then right here, these are the pickled onions that we're finishing it off with. We're gonna finish with a little bit of fresh dill. Which is a very traditional accompaniment with pierogi in Polish cuisine. Yeah. Yep, and to finish the dish, we'll just use some beautiful little edible flowers to kind of really make it pop. Oh, that's so pretty. <laughs> and it ties the dish together, even with the plate. You have the flowers and then those cute little edible flowers right on top. Exactly. This looks amazing. Thank you so much, Chef Jimmy, for sharing your recipe with us. This is Chef Jimmy's Beef Cheek Pierogi. Poland on a Plate is brought to you by Krakus. Krakus, the true imported Polish ham. segment I'm joined by my friend and fellow foodie to share one of our favorite girls night in recipes. This is Monica Radzewski and our recipe today is goulash with kopitka. So I'm going to ask for your help. We'll sure. start with the oil in our pan. 
We're gonna start sweating some onions. Get a little bit of color on those. <laughs> That's what you want the sizzle, you just don't want the oil spattering the on you. <laughs> yep. All right, well we have our onions if you want, give them a stir. Yep. My contribution to this recipe was the goulash part. And it's kind of Hungarian style, like if, as if you're gonna do the Platsky Pol Vongersku. So we're using today a combo of some shiitake mushrooms. And then also some kumini. I like doing the two different kinds of mushrooms because they both bring their own various flavors to the dish. And then also it's a textural difference and a size difference. Like the shiitakes are gonna be thinner chunks and then the creminis, they're gonna be like a more hearty bite of mushroom while you're eating. And I really like that contrast in the final dish. And the next component is the pork tenderloin. And I like using pork tenderloin in this because it's more tender. It's also a little bit leaner cut of meat, so for anyone who's <laughs> health conscious. And at this point, really all you wanna do is make sure that it's no longer pink on the outside. This is something that's gonna stew for an extended period of time, so we're just trying to get that initial sear on the outside of the meat. We're gonna begin the stewing process of the goulash. Just add a little bit of liquid, so it comes about halfway up. You don't want to completely cover the meat because you want it to be braising. You don't want mm -hmm. like a boiling. And then we'll add our spices. Mostly I'm using a Hungarian sweet paprika. It has that smoky flavor, but it does have a sweetness. It's not too spicy. And then I am also going to use a little bit of smoked paprika just to give it that extra dimension of flavor. And then some allspice. I'm also adding some vegeta, which is a Croatian seasoning, all-purpose seasoning. Which is also very popular in Poland, too. Last ingredient, I have two bay leaves, just to give it some extra flavor. And then you forget about it for an hour. And over here, I have what the final product looks like. You can see how that liquid has reduced down and it's created more of a sauce. And our pork is nice and tender. And those mushrooms have started to absorb a lot of those flavors that we have in the dish. So the goulash part of this recipe is done. Monica, I'm gonna give it to you now to take us through the rest of the recipe. So the traditional way of, of doing this is platsky po vengersku, which is you take the potato pancakes and you put goulash on top of it. But what we decided to do is switch things up a little bit and add yeah. potato dumplings instead. Make sure your water's boiling. This dough is great. Um, I love even using it with just leftover mashed potatoes. Mm -hmm. And you'll combine that with some flour, roll it out into long ropes, and then just cut it Depending on like the size, I'm sure like you're familiar with Italian mm -hmm. gnocchi, that's gonna be a shorter size, whereas Polish kopitka, a little bit longer, because kopitka actually means little hooves in Polish. It's kind of funny because we're making things with pork. So. Yeah. <laughs> we're keeping it consistent yeah. with our theme here. I see them popping up. I'm gonna grab okay. our bowl for plating. Okay. This looks amazing. I could literally just eat this entire bowl right now. And most people just eat these by themselves with a little bit of butter. Mmm, so good. <laughs> I'm just gonna grab our goulash to put right on top. Traditional garnish for goulash is parsley, mm -hmm. but to make ours a little fancier, I did kind of a parsley puree, essentially parsley oil just mixed in with some sour cream, which is mm -hmm. a very traditional accompaniment to goulash. And last but not least, if you want to make things a little bit prettier, we do have flowers that are edible. This looks beautiful and delicious. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Monica, for your help. And this is our Girls' Night In Goulash and Kopitka. Poland on a Plate is brought to you by Krakus. Krakus, the true imported Polish ham. Welcome back to Poland on a Plate. During this segment, I'll feature a delicious recipe using Krakus, the true imported Polish ham. Not only is soup a staple in Polish cuisine, for me, it's also the ultimate comfort food. So today, I wanted to share with you a recipe for one of my favorite soups, potato soup with Krakus ham. It's kind of like a loaded baked potato, but with delicious bites of authentic Polish ham throughout. We're going to start with our base. I have here half of an onion. I'm just going to start chopping in kind of a fan pattern here. I've left the end on just to keep it all together so it doesn't fall apart while I'm cooking. 
And then I'll just start dicing like this. Just want to keep it nice and small so that it cooks quickly. To our pan, I'll start to get that going. I have two tablespoons of unsalted butter and I'll just start adding in our onion. I'm gonna get some nice dark caramelized color going on this before we move forward with our soup. Next up, I have some celery. Just slice it down the middle and then dice that up. Using this combo of aromatics, the celery, carrot, and onion, this is a pretty traditional mirepoix. It's a start that you're gonna find for a lot of different soups, stews, sauces. It's just really getting kind of that base flavor in there and also adding some of this great nutrition to your final product. Such a beautiful contrast with the white of the onion, the green celery, and then our orange carrot. Which will be the last one to go in. Just like to take these bigger ends of it and chop them down before I start dicing across. Just make some more even dice, because carrots especially, they're one of those vegetables that'll change shapes throughout. It'll get a little bit bigger towards one end. You can see that great pop of orange color in there. All right, I'm gonna take this opportunity to season it with some salt and then some freshly ground black pepper. Part of our namesake, this is potato soup, so I have about three small russet potatoes that I've peeled and cubed, cubing just to make it a quicker cooking process. So I'll toss them in. I'll let them cook for a little bit just to get some of that nice brown color on the edges. Really adds that toasted potato flavor. Next up is gonna be to add our stock. I have about 32 ounces of chicken broth that I'm just gonna pour right in. Bring that up to a simmer and let all the flavors come together. All right, our soup has been cooking away and the potatoes and the rest of the vegetables should be nice and soft. So I'm gonna go ahead and puree it at this point. I'm using an immersion blender. If you don't have one of these, you could work in batches using your food processor. I like a really nice smooth texture for this soup, so I puree it all the way. If you wanted to leave a few chunks, that's fine, especially if you're using your food processor. Just put half of it in the processor, puree it, and then combine it with the other half. Just make sure when you're adding your vegetables that you're keeping them at a smaller dice so that they're more bite-sized and easier to eat. To add a little bit more creaminess to this soup, I'm adding some dairy. I always like to use a combination of milk and cream. It's about half a cup of milk and another half cup of cream. And then to kind of go along with that creaminess, I always think that you need a little bit of spice, a little bit of heat. So I'm using some smoked paprika to add some flavor and then also some chopped fresh parsley to give it that kind of refreshing bite. And last but not least, the star of our recipe. I'm using Krakus Original Polish Ham in this recipe. You could also use Krakus Reduced Sodium or Honey Ham Varieties. This looks delicious and I am ready to serve it off. I'm using a special bowl today. I have some traditional Polish bowl of Swaviec pottery. I'm gonna add our soup right into it. You can see the orange from the carrots, the green from the parsley, and that great pink from our Polish ham peeking out in the soup. This looks perfect. I'm just gonna steal a little sprig of parsley. Perfect. And this is my potato soup with Krakus ham. You can find this and other great Krakus recipes on our website at polandonaplate.com and find Krakus ham at fine delis near you. Bon appetit, or as you say in Polish, smacznego. Poland on a Plate is brought to you by Krakus. Krakus, the true imported Polish ham. And now I'll show you how to make miseria, which is a Polish cucumber salad. My twist is that instead of the traditional where you'll just take chunks of the cucumber, I actually peel it into long strips so that you have more of a cucumber noodle in the final salad. I'm starting by just taking off the peel and then I continue essentially just the same way, taking off strips of the actual cucumber flesh. And you can see that it's coming out in these nice long noodles of cucumber. So you keep going like that until you have a bunch of them. You'll wring out the extra moisture and I usually just leave them to sit in a colander so that they can drain 
can see that they've lost a lot of their moisture and this is especially important in Miseria because it's a sour cream based salad. So you want to get out any extra water so that it's not too soupy in the end. I'm going to add a little bit of acid. I have half of a lemon that I'll just squeeze right on top. And I like to do this while it's still in the colander so then that excess lemon juice can drip away. And then I will add a little bit of pepper and just a little bit of salt. All right, and we'll leave that sitting while I prepare the rest of the components. Miseria is a really light and refreshing salad that's typically eaten a lot in the summer and the warmer months. But because it's so light, I really like pairing it with heartier dishes throughout the year. It's just that great bit of freshness and green color that's a perfect complement to any kind of heavy stew or cooked meat. All right, I have some scallions here now that I've chopped up. I usually like to use just the white and the light green part. Try to stay away from the darker tops. And then I have some dill. Dill is probably one of the most recognizable flavor components of Miseria. This combo of dill and cucumber together is just wonderful. When you're adding dill, I always err on the side of less because it can be one of those overpowering herbs. And now for the sour cream. Again, you're gonna wanna go a little bit less. Start with just maybe a dollop and a half and then stir it to incorporate. You want it to just kind of be lightly coated in the sour cream. Even though we've let our cucumbers drain and we've wrung them out, they still have a lot of natural moisture to them, which will add to the sauce. So this is actually looking perfect. You wouldn't really want any more sour cream than this. All right, I have our beautiful plate right here. And this is just such a simple, refreshing, and colorful side dish. Really just perfect with anything, and even on its own. And this is my recipe for Miseria, very light and refreshing cucumber salad. You can find recipes from today's program on our website at polandonaplate.com. Bon appetit, or as we say in Polish, smacznego. Poland on a Plate is brought to you by Krakus. Krakus, the true imported Polish ham.